Hello YouTube, Jeremy Patrick Martin here, and I'm going to show you how to wear OS. And this is going to be just the uh, cell phone side of it, and it's going to be version 2.3. Um, wear OS is a dual operating system, and th that means there's two parts to it. Uh, one part of the operating system has to be on a cellular device. Um, and the other half has to be a wearable device. So one has to be on, on your phone, the other has to be on the watch for you to get the full benefit of the operating system. So we're gonna assume that you have all this stuff and you've already downloaded the app. So we're gonna go down and we're gonna open the app up, which is in the bottom right hand corner. And we're going to start, as usual, from top left to bottom right. And the top left, it says Vapor 2. That is the watch that has been selected. If you hit the arrow next to it, it says Add a New Watch. And if you have more than one Android watch, uh, this is how you would add it. Just underneath of it, it tells you the connection status of the watch selected in the drop-down menu. And currently, my Vapor 2 Misfit is connected via Bluetooth. Now, off to the right, it three dots. You hit on that, and at the very top of it, it says Disconnect Vapor 2. Now, if you go back to the top left and say that you had a list of watches up there, you can select a watch, have it come up, and then come over here and hit disconnect and whatever the name that watch is, and that's how you disconnect watches from your cell phone. All right, and then the next one down is something I really like. It, it's mostly here for developers, but it's it's so user friendly. They just left it on there for uh, everybody to have fun with. Screenshot request sent, and then it ready to send watch screenshot. Tap to send. All right, and then it gives you options, and it's uh, you know. It, like I said, it's mostly for de uh, developers, so you can save a screenshot to drive, say if it's it's uh, some kind of mess up or bug on it or whatnot. But it, it allows you to share this screenshot through every social media app that you have in every um, email app and whatnot in your system. I usually just open, either put mine on drive or open it up with uh, Keep Notes. And I don't know why I hit always there, but uh, this is the watch I'm wearing right now. It is uh, the watch face I'm wearing is called the Pixel um, Pixel Face uh, Pixel Experience is what it's called. All right, help and feedback. Your typical um, help page for Google, and. Uh, you know, you can talk to it and all that other stuff. You've, you've done this stuff before. I'm not even going to mess with that. And um, same thing with the about. This is all of your licenses and your open source stuff and all your legal stuff. And at the very bottom is your version, which is 2.3. And uh, right here is uh, this big picture is supposed to be a representation of the watch that has been selected. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty good representation of my watch. I, I'm very happy with the Misfit Vapor 2. All right, next is uh, watch faces. And I, I prefer the Facer. I got a premium Facer account, which is nice. If you do have uh, Wear OS, I suggest giving it a try. There's a lot of good stuff in that store. Uh, most, uh, all the rest of these watch faces you see next to it, are the ones that come with the watch, this specific watch. So, I mean, if you it, different watches are going to have different stuff. Uh, and I don't know if you'd call this bloatware or not. I'm not really sure if I'd call it bloat. It, it does come with it. So, I mean, and uh, up to the to the right, it, it says 83%. That is showing the battery percentage for my watch. And then underneath of it is a blue hyperlink that says more. We'll click on that. And these are all the all the faces and in a much more manageable thing. And, and there's some things that I really like. Um, and some of them are just 
plain and basic. I've tried them all, and I found that I, I like, like if I'm really into working out like summertime and I'm doing a lot of running and stuff, I really like to have the Google Fit uh, watch. Uh, face and then I sometimes I get the pixel watch face on there but um, you know for the most part I'm sticking with facer itself and facer has a gear in it and I'm not gonna click on it so when you buy something premium like a premium watch face it'll just have a gear in it when you click on it it'll open up its own stuff inside of the app and I'm not even gonna mess with that so we're gonna hit back on the on the watch faces and Top left, it says settings. All right, Tiles is the latest and greatest uh, update that Wear OS has needed for the longest time. And um, what it does is it, al it allows you to have up to, I do believe it's still, in uh, as far as the making of this video is five tiles that you can have. And uh, the tiles are your next event agenda, which is 100% connected to your calendar. Um, the next one is a timer clock, which is nice. So, like, if you're it, it, this is this is mostly for um, workouts and stuff like that. Uh, if you're a runner, or have, even if you're cooking, you know, the timer does come in handy. Um, headline news that's straight from the Google uh, News app um, forecast weather this is from weather.com and it's as far as accuracy goes it's been pretty reliable uh, I would I would say up to about maybe 90 85 percent reliable don't quote me on that <laughs> But these are options that I haven't, ch I can just grab them and then uh, add them on, right? And then I can say, let's see, uh, and I want weather. All right, so uh, I got my goals for Google Fit. Um, heart rate, because uh, this this thing has a, a laser that shoots into your arm and, and detects your heart rate. And heart points. Uh, some, and I do a lot of construction, so sometimes if I'm climbing up and down a ladder a lot, it'll automatically kick me in for heart points. That means that I'm really getting it, you know, and my heart rate's up and I'm moving a lot, right? And, uh, and I can move these around how I want, you know. So if, and this is all from, from the home screen on your watch, you swipe from right to left. So right now, the first thing I would see would be the timer and then my goals. Uh, I, I like having my goals just as soon as I flip over. And uh, the heart rate, you can sit there and click on it and it'll, it'll check your heart rate right there for you and everything. It's really nice, man. This is what Wear OS needed and, and all the people were very happy when it came out. We were like, you know, this should have been like this a couple years ago. Moving on to notifications. All right, silence phone while we're in watch. Now this is nice and it also saves your um, your phone battery. Uh, and uh, like, like for example, silence incoming calls, that's your ringer on your phone. So you turn that on, so when somebody calls you, your watch vibrates and your phone is silent. It does. Your phone doesn't vibrate in your pocket and it doesn't ring in your pocket so that you don't have to reach into your pocket and pull it out to see who's calling. Your watch will vibrate and you can look at your watch and you can tell who's calling and whether you want to deal with it or whether you want to silence it. And if you do work like I do where you're doing construction and stuff like that and your hands are all nasty, you don't want to go sticking your hands in your pockets, this comes in handy for the silence incoming calls. Same thing with alerts and notifications. When you have both of those on, everything is all of the alerts and alarms and telephone calls and everything are rooted straight to your watch so that you don't have to pull out your uh, phone to see what's going on. All right, change watch notifications. And this gives you a, a it's very, you know, it's, it's typical, it's typical Google, it's typical uh, Android, it's typical open source, it's all about customization and it allows you to choose 
what you want to be able to give notifications and whatnot. Maybe you think that the download manager downloading something isn't worthy to be sent to your watch. You know, it's your decisions there. All right. And agenda setting. Like I said, this is the, the agenda setting. This is anybody who's familiar with Google Calendar automatically knows exactly what they're looking at there. And this is, and Google Calendar has come a long way. It's, it's so when you get uh, Gmail with dates and times saying like an appointment for your orthodontist or something like that. Google now just automatically hooks all this stuff up into your agenda. You could you could have had that thing in your email and for in your Gmail and forgotten about it. Next thing you know, boot, you're getting an alarm on your on your watch saying you know you got an appointment for the orthodontist today, which does come in handy. And you can make specialty, and you know, this is this is a complete. This is a topic for another video. The Google Calendar is something I'm working up to because that I love that thing. I'm getting off track here. All right, next is uh, Google Assistant. All right, settings goes to the exact page that you think it's going to go to. The typical page. And I'm, I'm not going to mess with this page either because this page is a, another video. But you can, you can use the Google Assistant through your watch. When I get up in the morning, I get my coffee and everything, I, and it's, and it's all, all icy outside, right? And I gotta leave all the lights on in the house because I got the smart lights with the Google Home and everything. And I go out and I make sure I got my front porch light on so I don't bust my ass on, on the ice and go out and get in my truck. And once I'm in my truck, I, tur I talk to my watch, I say, I tell it to shut down all the lights. I'm not saying the words. And just do it straight through the watch and then it turns off all my lights, which is really nice. Next is, uh, what can you do? Now this is the stuff, this is different from the last page. Uh, we're gonna walk through this. These are all the verbal commands that you can use with Google Assistant through your watch. Send messages, set timers. Setting timers is great. Talking straight to the watch through it. Making calls. Now, you can't talk and do telephone calls through the watch itself, but you can uh, pick them up and activate them. Say like if you have, um, if you have uh, earbuds in, uh, you can it, it, when it calls, and you got like like the settings that I showed you earlier, where uh, your phone won't ring but your watch will, and it'll show you a picture on your watch of who's calling and whether you want to ignore and pick it up. When you pick, you push the green phone that says pick it up, it'll go straight, and you can talk through. And so you don't have to ever pull your phone out. And you don't you, you don't even have to reach up and push your ear. To do it, you just look at it and see who it is and, and accept it. Uh, set reminders really comes in handy because the job that I'm doing, I do a lot of driving and I'll just do reminders right there while I'm driving. Navigating, um, while I'm driving, uh, before I have to make a turn, if I have Google Maps going, my watch will vibrate to let me know that the turn is coming up or that something important is happening, like a speed trap or something. Um, play music, when you got play music on and you have the uh, right setting hooked on, and I'll, I'll eventually get to that, um, it will have a remote control on your watch with a picture of the, whatever you're, you're playing, which whether it's music or video and whatever you're casting, it'll have a picture of whatever it is on your watch with uh, controls for volume, pause, and play and all that other stuff. Uh, yeah, basically your watch is like a remote control for media. Uh, get fit, open apps. Lots of good stuff, and yes, it does have, it also has Google too, which really does come in handy. 
Uh, uh, what can you do? Settings and settings takes you right back to the usual stuff. There's some, there, you know, typical, typical Google, typical Android. There's a, there's usually three or four different ways to do the same thing. Um, advanced settings. Okay, always on screen. You know, you can have a door. The screen is off, and and it only turns on when you tap it or whenever something happens. And uh, tilt the wake is. Uh, I don't care too much for it. That's when you pull your uh, arm up to look at the watch. It realizes that you've you've tilted it, and it'll make the screen turn on so you can see what time it is or whatnot. Um, auto launch media controls. That's what I was talking about with the music and the video. Um, it, it's it's like a remote control. Uh, open media controls automatically on watch when playback starts from phone. So if if I'm um, casting um, like an Avengers movie from my Pixel 4 XL uh, onto the TV, I can just set my phone down because I got my watch as a remote control. I can pause the uh, movie from my watch. I can stop it. Um, and you, you, for you to have, and I've had a lot of people that be like, I don't understand it, but every time I play music, my watch is taken over by the music and it's aggravating. And I'm like, well, to, to make that turn off, you just click this on and off right here. All right. So to some people, it's aggravating. To me, I'm like, man, that's I love it. Uh, accounts is what you think it is and you can have more than one account and you can flip back and forth on the accounts on your watch um, privacy uh, yeah and, and you got cloud sync that and you can turn off cloud sync if you if you you want some privacy or whatnot and of course you know the, the typical Google send diagnostic information um, Watch battery. This is, you know, they give you some develop developer stuff here and, and some predictions on how the watch battery goes. Uh, it's gotten better since I first bought it. It's had a lot of updates. Watch storage. Uh, it's really not that much. And uh, the, the RAM, the physical memory on this thing is like barely over half a gig. But they're getting better. Wear OS is getting a lot better. And it uses Google Play services a lot. It really leans hard on that app, which is one of the, which is one of the reasons why it's the highest one. It's the one taking up the most memory. Most people. That's another video. I'm going to explain how that what that app does. It does a lot more than what you think it does. Oh, I've already done that. Um, watch app data usage. Usual stuff. And at the bottom, don't touch that unless you really, really mean it. Unpair watch. Factory resets and removes it. This is unlike the other one where you just disconnect the Bluetooth. That, what I, I was showing you at the beginning right here. So you pick Vapor 2 in the uh, top left-hand corner, and then you come over here, and you disconnect it. All that, that doesn't... That doesn't factory reset anything. All it does is just disconnect the Bluetooth link between the phone and the watch. But in this situation right here, it, it, whatever watch you have right here, when you go down here and you hit that, you are going to factory reset the watch and you're going to take all of the information that's on the phone about that watch and that all gets reset and wiped out. And that's it, my brothers. Uh, Wear OS, it used to be uh, Android Wear. It's come a long way. It used to be a joke. It's getting better. Google needs to come out with a Pixel Watch. Uh, my brothers and sisters, if you if you find a good deal on a good watch, make sure you get one that has uh, some water resistance. You don't want to go buy a nice watch and then like have a sweaty day or something like that or get caught in the rain and it get messed up. So be smart with it, what you buy and what you spend and uh, Google on.